Hello sir, good morning, good afternoon, and good night. <laughs> this is my machine learning, which is landmark recognition. So, I took it from here. When you click this, open a new tab. I took the data set. Data set. Totally. Data set from here. Right there. Okay. Now I close that. So, you can see here, this is the library. There's so many comments very it will give you a headache if you re, if i read it right now so you can see all of the all of the lines have comment you can read it post the video i put like this okay you can see the next one what this code does is it just loads the data and pre-processes it then the next code block of code it reads the image file and resize it to a specified size the next one this block of code defines a function called get size that calculates the size of an object and its sub objects in bytes oh my god in bytes recursively which can be used to monitor memory usage and optimize the memory usage of a program the next one, this one will just load the training data from the CSV file that I have linked here. So this one, well the next next one is called landmark underscore unique. It creates a variable called landmark unique which is the number of unique landmarks in the training data set by using the unique function on the landmark ID column of the data frame and finding the length of the return unique values. Next one is just simply returning the data frame, which can be used for further analysis of th or training a model. It also shows this one, landmark ID and image path. And this is the ID. You can post the video, sir, if you want. Next one, this get size, open and close parenthesis, train DF. It, the, it's a function called to the previously defined get size function, which is up there. The next is this train df dot info memory open close parenthesis memory underscore usage equals deep. This is used to display a summary of the of the data frame memory usage, including memory usage of the sub objects. It shows right here, sir. As you can see there. So basically we're just trying to train the machine, of course. This the next block of codes, which is this prints, all of these prints, used to analyze the training data set by providing information about the number of images in the data set, the number of different classes, the minimum and maximum class value, and the number of repetitions of elements for each class in the data set. So it's just basically this. It's you no know, self-explanatory, sir. Then you, it will just print this, the value counts right here. Next one, creates a figure with specified size, this. So we're, this is the size, the 25 and 10. Then for this block of code, then generates a random sample of 20 images from the training data set and plus them on the figure in a four to five grid with the X and Y axis ticks removed and the image size label for each image. And then this one, it just shows the plot. You can see, sir, right here, these are the images that were random samples right here. You can see very clearly. <clears throat> well, this one, this is the image size, minimum class, maximum class. This, this block of code, sir, contains only the rows in the train DF data frame where the landmark ID column is greater than minimum class and less than or equal to maximum class. So the explanation for this is quite long and it shows in the comments already. So I, if I, it will take time for me to explain. So it's just, these are just training also for the data set. I mean, for the model, it just trains. And this one shows the sample datas as you can see, the repetitions of elements by class, then landmark ID, length, and then the type. Next is 
It gives summary statistics of the distribution of unique values counts in the landmark ID column of the train DF data frame after the undersampling, sam um, undersampling step. As you can see, sir, self explanatory also here. Next is this line of code, it creates a figure with specified size as well. This is also the size. Then generate a sample of 20 images again. And then images are also resized a specified size by calling the function image img read resize. So this one. Then it shows the plot. This is different from the other pictures earlier. So it's just randomized. Yeah. Okay. The X here is the images. And then the Y is the classes, as it's, it says here, yeah? And then this one. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> It prints the variable types, the elements, <laughs> the X and Y elements. I'm sorry, sir. I'm in the dorm. <laughs> and I'm, there's people here, so yeah. Next one, moving on. We are going to the label encoding. <laughs> this, this block of code is for the encoding. And then also this one, sorry, it's just for the arrays as well. And this one separates the data for training, testing, and validating. As you can see here, we've done this before and I'm just applying it again. Applies the data augmentation to an image and shows the original and modified images in a figure. This is, I can't really explain because it's in all, it's all in my head. So this is how I did it. But I also took inspiration and information from past codes as well. So it, this one helped me also. As you can see, this is the pictures. Modificate. This is the original one. This is the modification. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and so on. Next is performs oversampling and prints time taken and data count for after oversampling. Also right here. Then it will print here. Oversampling duration, 622 seconds. Training data after oversampling, 4040 data. Training data, the training data has gone from 2751 to 4040. Next is the CNN hyper hyperparameters. It says here the convol convolution template size, activation function, maximum pooling template size, template offset during maximum pooling, percentage of neurons that are deactivated in the, within with the dropout layer, amount of data which with which it is trained in each epoch, the number of epochs to train, then learning rate regular. And then lastly, regularization of weights. This one is also a data augmentation. This block of code right here is the convolutional block one and then until block five. The model head classification is this block of code. Output layer here, optimizers here. Then model compilation here callbacks until here we have three callbacks right here and then model training this is the model training now then it will just return the model history and here we have this block of code it just imports the class weight right here train class weight also this is the calculation of weights of each class of data for sample training. Then the ice frequency is also printed here, which is 71. Start time here. We've already done this earlier and we're doing it again for the history. 
can't really explain it's too much there then this is where it's the the epoch goes the epoch happens so it's quite a lot it took some time doing this so yeah it shows the loss and loss and validation loss accuracy and validation accuracy after the epoch yeah <laughs> this is okay next one is the model summary it displays a summary of models architecture including layers output shapes and the number of parameters right here sure this is the layer the output shape and the parameters boom bada boom it also prints out the total parameters right here 5 million trainable parameters 5 million almost 6 million both of them then the non-trainable parameters is 3008 <clears throat> next is the plt figure fig size this code is creating a figure with 12 subplots of images and adding labels to the subplots and then when you show the images the class are determined right here um, boom boom bada bim bada boom Next is, it will predict the input data and save the predictions in a variable. This is the code as well. And this is the output, yeah. Next, it creates two lists from model predictions and applies inverse transform to the first list. As you can see here, <clears throat> the first list is yeah. Next, evaluates the model's performance on test data and prints the test loss and test accuracy. Boom. Here is the evaluation. And then, this is the score of the evaluated model. And then it will print the test loss and test accuracy right here. Next is reverse, reverses the encoded labels of Y test back to the original values. It's just this. Then loads the data frame into a variable, which is also this code. Displays test images with their predictions, actual classes, and similar <clears throat> images from the data frame. We're almost close to end, sir. So this, I think this is it. After, after printing all of the test images with the predictions, this is what it looks like, sir. You will notice something that the images predicted class 58, confidence 0 0.76 in actual class 58. It's just the same. It gets and and collects the images that are look alike, that looks alike. As you can see, they look alike with each other. It's almost the same images. Boom, 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 boom. You can see the data here as well. Doom, 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 doom. It's almost the same images all together. Like this. Yes. Okay, so that's it, sir. Thank you for listening and thank you for laughing with me.